character based on Mr. Benny, uh, played by Nicolas Cage in the new film, Snowden. And I wanted to get uh, Mr. Benny, the former leader of the National Security Agency, on to get his view on the film uh, and to discuss uh, how accurate it is. From my research, it's, it's extremely accurate on many, many fronts. Uh, I just want to say this is Oliver Stone's best work in my view. But I saw some areas uh, in the film th that even though I'd read books about Snowden and obviously read thousands of articles about it, I really wasn't uh, aware of. And when I say I wasn't aware of it, I knew all about it from other whistleblowers and my own research and the fact that pieces of it had come out over the years, like the Stuxnet and other systems, that industrial hardware had been loaded into the software, the chips themselves, in layman terms, into telecommunications and power grids around the world including in our allies, like Japan, Switzerland, Germany, you name it. Because from the engineers I talked to, going back two decades, they were always explaining to me, Alex, keyword searches, basically a Google for the private internet, a Google for digital communication, a searchable system is the basis of Echelon and what's going on. Of course, we have the top expert in the world, undisputed, so I'm just giving you a basic layman gestalt here. He'll correct any, uh, any fallacies or any misrepresentations. But from studying this 20 years, I mean, I've been on the cutting edge of having whistleblowers on and trying to understand it, that the big enchilada was the plan to load kill switches and things into key infrastructures around the world because the concern is enemies or traitors or terrorists or corporate uh, extortion groups could get in and use those kill switches and control systems to wreak incredible havoc and shouldn't there be conventions against this type of warfare just like there are against chemical biological or nuclear so that we try to not ever have it take place it just seems like building all these back doors into things and putting kill switches and things creates a vulnerability for everybody and look at how hillary is being stung by these surveillance grids. Look how George Soros is. Look how Obama is. Look at how all these crimes are coming out about the Bushes and the Saudis and the Clintons and all the rest of it. Through this surveillance grid, they built, ignoring William Benny, who is admittedly the guy that built everything up to the late 1990s and 2001, but had it designed to actually defeat the Soviet Union uh, had it actually designed to roll up real terrorists with targeted information. Instead, they created a system where no one's safe, no one has their data protected, and it's showing the arrogance of these elites that weren't 200 IQ geniuses like Mr. Benny is. I mean, he's admittedly, even in mainstream news, and, and the government says, one of the most famous code breakers ever. Uh, his thinking on computers and systems and breaking codes and... Uh, algorithms is is just second to none. He's an idiot savant when it comes to it, if he doesn't mind me saying that. That's why he ran the actual NSA, not the Politico that would go talk to Congress. And he tried to stop all this. We live in a world, then we're going to our guest for the rest of the hour. We live in a world where we have the supposed bomber in, in New York and, and uh, in New Jersey. His father, two years ago, comes to the FBI and says he's planning attacks. They do nothing because they're ordered not to. And they had all this intelligence and data that he went to these foreign countries and did nothing. Same thing with the San Bernardino shooters. Major Hassan at Fort Hood, on and on and on. Oh, Obama didn't see the ISIS and Al-Qaeda invasions. Bull. So the truth is, we have this giant grid and we're less safe. And that's what William Benny went through channels, at, you know, resigned after he found out about all the spying in 2001. He's been a frequent guest here. And I'm just recapping it for new viewers and listeners why this is so important. And then he went and testified to Congress in secret, and their response was to arrest William Drake, his colleague. Their response was to SWAT team him when he was in the shower, on purpose, uh, William Benny. The answer was to persecute the very patriots, you know, that held the position of multi-star generals in the command of this country actually fighting real enemies. They just ignored them, pushed them aside, and engaged in this great act of treason. And then you're watching the film. This is real stuff that happened. You've got Snowden's boss at the CIA when he's the top contractor 
Booz Allen, telling him, don't worry about your girlfriend cheating on you. I went and checked on it. She's not cheating on you with that photographer. And it's just the realization, the last straw for Snowden, that this guy's watching the lady he's about to marry. And, of course, it's all come out that most of these NSA people were, you know, out there doing stuff like this or watching people on webcams have sex. And, I mean, it's just incredible. And it's so powerful. It, now he, he may disagree. He's the real expert. I'm going to skip this network break so we have more time. Uh, William Benny, thank you so much for your courage and coming back on. Uh, a goodamerican.org uh, is the documentary film coming out uh, that you're in. Exposedfacts.org. Uh, Bill Benny, thank you so much, sir. Well, thanks for having me again, Alex. It's good well, to be with you. Uh, in general, is, is what I said earlier, uh, you know, a basically accurate uh, kickoff? Actually, it's really spot on. Uh, <clears throat> I would only add that, uh, you know, uh, the recent exposure of some of the software that was, uh, I mean, I think they have another Snowden in the NSA somewhere in the tailored access office because all their software going at weaknesses against the uh, Firewalls, switches, servers, and the networks uh, was was captured and is now out in the open. Wow! And people are trying to sell it. So what that really something I've been complaining about um, because it's been very short sighted of NSA and uh, and the FBI to do this uh, is to they they uh, not only did they create the weaknesses but they also found weaknesses in the systems like called zero day weaknesses. Uh, Built into the software that they that that uh, uh, companies were uh, were uh, selling, and <clears throat> they never told anybody uh, because that would be cybersecurity. If they did that, I mean that would protect people would fix those, and they wouldn't be penetrated. They couldn't be penetrated by those weaknesses then. So what they did was they allowed them to continue, and they did that simply because it allowed them a window to look into everything that everybody's doing. And and uh, and for them, uh, they that was the operations side. They they wanted to be able to do that so they could gather data on everybody. But what it meant was they left everybody vulnerable and exposed. And that's why you're seeing all these hacks today. It was very short sighted of them. And you warned them. You resigned over this. I mean, let's go over some of that. This is this is 16 years ago, 15 years ago. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, the, you know this the point you were. Like this, what it called words. The sound. Uh, Mr. Benny, operate. Mr. Benny, I think you're on a cell phone. We might try to get a landline with you. I didn't know we were on cell. Can you get to a different position for a second, please? Uh, okay. Let me see if I can move. Okay. Oh, you're a lot better. Uh, please can you continue. Hear me a little better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I meant uh, uh, the the dictionary select uh, approach or word search is like a Google search has been the foundation of how they operated since the telex days, which is the 1930s. And uh, they took it through the courts, and every all the courts agreed they could do that. And so that's the why they've continued doing that instead of trying to think of a better way to do it, especially in the digital age when they're buried with all kinds of data. So, uh, you know, that's what's making them dysfunctional, because when you do those word searches, you get so much material you can't get through it. That's one of the founding problems that they have and why they're failing to stop all these attacks, even when they know all the people who commit them. That's amazing. So they leave all the vulnerabilities in the Internet and telecommunications so they can break in easier in an automated way, knowing full well it leaves our government, our industries, our people open to hackers, open to other governments, and they call that cybersecurity. I call that the opposite. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Wow. Uh, that's very short thing. Well, when you told him this uh, uh, more than 15 years ago, um, again, former leader of the NSA, uh, William Benny, what did they say to you? Uh, uh, actually, uh, they, didn't, they didn't say anything. They just, uh, they ignored me. They, they, uh, I couldn't get them to do anything I was suggesting. It was just, uh, you know, after Hayden came in, they adopted the collect everything approach or bulk acquisition approach why it was a hopeless case they wouldn't uh, they simply wouldn't listen in the case of tom drake when he went up to talk to the uh, general counsel of nsa they told him don't ask any more questions so i mean that was their answer you know Here's watching the, the film Moore. snowden i want to talk about that a little bit with you sir but then get into any yeah. area you want you're obviously the expert you're one of the few people that's actually in the same boat as snowden in that you know in the film and also in in speeches he's given uh, he points out that he would write software to do something constitutional that actually helped us, they would always twist it 
to do something unconstitutional or basically evil. And then, of course, a lot of the things you developed, uh, we now know were actually twisted uh, into what's currently going on, Dr. Benning. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and actually, I was an advisor to uh, Oliver Stone on the movie. So uh, I tried to make sure that uh, all the information he had was accurate and, and uh, you know. So no I should have pointed that out, obviously. Anything. So that's why it's so incredibly accurate is that the former yeah. head of the NSA basically was the technical director. So So tell us about the film and what you think of it. Oh, I think the film is absolutely great. It's a great film. I mean, what it does is it takes you through uh, someone, Edward Snowden, who starts off being a very uh, positive uh, supporter of the government, what it's doing, and then takes you through his life and how it and experiences and how, in the end, he starts to see the, the, the corruption and the crime and the criminality of it. And, and then he turns, and that's really what this is all about. Um, that, that story of his experiences going through his uh, work with CIA and and the NSA. I remember. And, and I, think, I think it really shows. Uh, I was raised a Democrat. See, I didn't know your story. I, but I think for a window into what's really happening, even though people don't realize that's what's going on. Take some time then as the technical advisor on the film uh, to, 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 to break down what's really happening and what's really going on. And then I'd like to ask you specifically about what I mentioned earlier, an area you never see on the news, uh, but that is covered in the film, and that I haven't really heard you elaborate too much on on this show. Please take some time out on loading the software and the hardware, the chips, into all of our allies' infrastructure and our own telecoms and our own computer companies working with the NSA, CIA, and others uh, and private contractors to load the whole world uh, with these holes, uh, which, again, the hackers all then learn about and exploit. I mean, it's our government basically ruining the Internet for the world and, and letting bad hackers do whatever they want, not just our own government. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the point is that uh, uh, NSA and the, and the U.S. government have no monopoly on smart people. So that, that means any weakness they create in the system can be detected by others around the world. It's not just uh, governments, but it can be individual hackers. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not something that uh, is a smart thing to do. If you find problems, you should fix them so, you, so that people are a little more secure. So, but that's the real problem. But, for example, they would do things. Uh, there's three, three ways they, they go at the worldwide network. One is uh, uh, working with the, co the communications companies that own the fiber lines that allow them to... Uh, to uh, tap them in cooperation with them. They help them do that. Uh, and then the other is to go with governments and have the governments uh, get involved, the intelligence agencies of, uh, for example, the BND or GCHQ. Other intelligence agencies get in and cooperate with them uh, in terms of uh, uh, tapping fibers and acquiring data. Uh, and the third one is uh, it's a unilateral thing. If uh, if uh, nobody gets the agreement from the governments or from the companies, they simply do it unilaterally, covertly, you know, like that, that would be the muscular taps of the uh, fiber lines between the data centers of uh, Yahoo, Google, and uh, all the major tele uh, Internet service providers. So they could tap all of those lines with or without their approval or help. And so it simply means that they're after all the data in the world. The problem here is they all are so uh, confused, and uh, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so I, get, I, I say they're all confused in terms of saying and thinking that data is intelligence. Data is not intelligence. It's simply data. You have to analyze that and be able to figure out what, it, in, what is meaning in that and data to be able to produce intelligence. Yeah, just because That's you have different. a warehouse of books or a library doesn't mean you've read all those books. Exactly. And you don't really know what the, what the essence is of those books until you can understand them and be able to put a picture together and infer things like intentions and capabilities and threats. Wow. Um, what about the particular areas where we see them shutting down the power grid and Internet grid of Syria, which we now know did happen, and, and Snowden seeing that unfold? Uh, what about when, when we see the model of being able to, again, shut off the, the power of uh, you know, all of Tokyo or all of Japan? I mean, we're not just talking about putting grids in to spy on the data. Uh, the film gets into the kill switches, uh, the systems they can use to actually shut down the power grid. Yeah, what uh, I think uh, in the uh, 
30C3 conference, uh, Computer Chaos Club conference in Hamburg, Germany, uh, two years ago. I think uh, Jacob Applebaum went through a whole series of uh, programs they had uh, from close-in access to actually uh, implanting hardware and software in, uh, in switches uh, as they were transiting, like Cisco switches that were being shipped through the mail. They would waylay the shipment, uh, open up the packages, insert the hardware and software to allow them to take over the switch anytime they wanted, and uh, then close it back up and let it continue on. And then the poor sucker at the other end it installs it in their system, and they own their switch in their system. And I've been told by whistleblowers inside the biggest carriers that it's industrial scale, that we're not just talking about, say, in a city like Austin, uh, you know, you think you're going to go call them all, go into a particular store and buy a product, but they've got a lot of people in those that actually work as a side job as a, quote, Homeland Security Infrastructure Protection Officer, and they sit there with the data package and say, oh, your package will be ready in a few days, and then they jack it with all the crap, and you come and pick it up. I mean, this is industrial-level espionage just against humanity. Right, it's the whole world. Also, I, I would point out that's basically what the FBI and NSA were after with the iPhone and Apple. Uh, you know, the, the idea that they wanted they wanted Apple to allow, they had more than 10, they would delete everything on the phone. Sorry, sorry, your phone cut uh, out again uh, there. We know we can't use your landline because of tapping. I wasn't supposed to get into that, I know. But uh, that, uh, let's, uh, let's go back to your cell here and, and uh, repeat what you just oh, said, okay. Mr. Benny. Uh, hey, here's the phone. That's yeah, this is key intel on Apple. I know they don't want this out, but let's go ahead and uh, try to move to another position. We'll get this out. Okay. They, they've been fighting. jamming his phone line, folks. We've got to go to a cell phone. This is a little inside baseball, but go ahead. Can you? Okay, how's now? Yes, we can hear how's you now, now, sir. Go ahead. Okay, well, I mean, with Apple and the iPhone, uh, what they were really after was Apple to, to get software to disable uh, that uh, password limitation in terms of testing and also the fact they couldn't do... They had only you put like one in a minute, and also you, you needed to put in the little character uh, spacing, which meant that somebody was tapping it and not a machine. So they, they wanted them to design software to get around that, and the reason they wanted to do that was because they already had uh, stolen all of the uh, user ID uh, access codes from the SIM cards being produced by in the, in the order of billions every year from companies. And so they had all these... Uh, ID SIM card equivalences. So if these uh, if these uh, uh, SIM cards were installed in any iPhone in the world, that uh, once they signed on, they could access it remotely from any from NSA to any point in the world. So they want the ultimate backdoor hardwired into everything. And to Apple's credit, they were the, one of the only companies not doing that. Correct? That's right. Yep. And that's good that they fought them because this is you know. This is actually NSA, I think, already had the ability to do that. And uh, they just, the FBI wanted to do it so they could claim that that would be the, what, how they access the data and be admissible in court. Uh, let's, let's, so I, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I, go ahead. Sorry. Well, there's so many questions. I'm jumping around here because it's just mystifying how powerful the film is. And I know that you were a consultant on it because we'd interviewed about that a few years ago. And then I, it clicked. Of course, you were the technical advisor, so that's why it's so incredibly accurate. Uh, but looking at this now, where we are today, projecting forward, um, the, I mean, the film breaks down the fact that it's gotten worse under Obama, not better. Uh, and it seems like they're just moving forward. Where does this end? Well, unless we stand up and do something about it, it's going to get even worse with the Internet of Things, you know? That's only going to get worse. So, that I mean, that means all the devices that you have and own are going to be connected to the Internet. That's that's going to make it exceedingly bad. So now... They're all accessible and controllable. All accessible and controllable, absolutely. The driverless cars, the smart meters, uh, everything wired in. So it's not just this technocracy jacking into governments and power grids. Now it's your house. That's right. And everything in it that's electronic, that's running. Were you ever Including given... pacemakers and things like that, you know, if you want. Oh, it's just unlimited what they can do with it. What about a, a larger plan? I mean, I know it's about looting and making money, hundreds of billions of dollars you know, globally a year by, by these companies, but what's the master strategy on building this technocracy? I mean, do, do, do they have one? I think it's a, uh, a uh, well, uh, this is my impression, okay? <laughs> so
Certainly, it is uh, po population control, but not just of any given country, but of the world. And so what they're after in direct, and I think the, uh, Obama has stated this from various uh, points, uh, that he wanted a world community. Uh, so I think that's probably what they're after. In order to do that, they have to be able to control the people of the world. So in order to do that, you have to n have knowledge of them to know who's doing what so you can stop it or manipulate it any way you want. William Benny, that is the most profound thing I think I've ever heard you say, and you've said a lot of profound things. This is the key for a technocracy world government program, and Davos admits that's their plan, but uh, here you are, the former leader of the National Security Agency, telling us that that's what they're building, a beast system. If you're not a Christian, it almost makes you one, doesn't it? William Benny's our guest, uh, ExposedFacts.org, publishes some of his writings, and he's also in the new documentary, A Good American.org. Stay with us, sir. We're going to go back to William Benny here in just a moment. He's with us for the balance of the hour. We really are thankful for his time. Um, he's going to tell you in a moment when the new documentary that he's in and also an advisor on, A Good American, uh, is coming out, agoodamerican.org. But again, Snowden, I, I just couldn't believe how accurate it was that, that, that Hollywood, as corrupt as it is, that this came out. You know, it gave me hope. We're going to be talking to him here in just a moment. Um, Wayne Madsen is going to be popping in, investigative journalist, formerly with the National Security Agency as well. Uh, he's popping in with a few questions in the next 30 minutes, but he'll ride shotgun with us for 30 minutes into the next hour as well. And then I'll open the phones up. And then Anthony Gucciardi uh, is coming up. We've got Joe Biggs in the air going to North Carolina to Charlotte, where George Soros, admittedly, and the globalists are spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to start a civil war to distract from the ongoing uh, global colonization uh, of the United States and everybody else that's taking place. I can't believe I'm saying this. It sounds like a science fiction movie, but it's in the emails. And we'll talk more about, with William Benny, what he warned of 15 years ago to the government. This biting them in the ass. And I'm sorry to use that term, but that's what's happening. Where they build all these back doors to screw us, and then everybody's getting in and it's, it's bringing them down. It almost makes me want Big Brother, but I actually don't. But it's destroying them. And he's the first guy months ago that said he thinks it's somebody inside the government because of the way it's coming out. And this is a guy that used to, you know, be able to track the Russians and predict and find people. He's really smart. But then I started talking to government sources, and people started getting executed and killed and arrested. And they said, no, this is the U.S. government. This is the U.S. Army. Uh, it's people inside different political organizations. Democrats are seeing all this evil. They know how bad Hillary is. And so they're trying to say the Russians are doing all this, and we're these traitors. Anybody that exposes, you know, what's happening with the NSA, when they're the ones that have sold us out. So they're being hoisted on their own petard, as they say. Uh, but before we go any further, we're listeners supported with our great sponsors. Uh, one of them that we've had for, I don't know, 16, 17 years, Solutions from Science, uh, always advertises once they have a sale going. Solutions from Science Solar Summer Sale is about to end because fall just started, but it's been extended just a few weeks. SummerSolarSale.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Amazing solar panel systems, control systems, uh, really a bargain. Solutions from Science is one of my oldest sponsors and have been around forever. Right now they're having a solar summer sale and they have many different options to choose from, including solar generations, uh, solar generators, wind turbines, EMP bags, that's to not be tracked, uh, smart LED light bulbs, and much more. Buy one uh, perfect power package and use the coupon ALEX to receive another one absolutely free. SummerSolarSale.com or call 1-877-327-0365 or SolarSale.com. That's SummerSolarSale.com. Uh, so a lot to cover. Obviously, we're running uh, some specials that are going to end very soon that we've extended on some of the nutraceuticals and supplements like super male and super female vitality. We also have 20% off on high quality uh, organic vitamin B12 with our own proprietary brand, Secret 12. It's organic, vegan, uh, highly absorbable. You take it under the tongue and several drops a day. This is what I give myself, my children. And the great part about it is these are high-quality products with five-star review on third-party sites, reviewed by thousands. And it's what I personally use, and it supports the broadcast and getting the word out. So it's so incredibly important. Now, going back to William Benny. Mr. Benny, I've been asking a lot of the questions here today, uh, but I'd like to give you a few minutes to talk about other areas, other topics that are coming out dealing 
with the NSA, with all these other agencies, with the 800,000 contractors that are have top secret access. I mean, this just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Other points you'd like to relay as the former leader uh, of the National Security Agency to our viewers and listeners. Well, I, I, I guess what I could basically say is that uh, the, the real threat here is that intelligence is being outsourced to contractors, uh, all, all types, I mean, including analysis I mean, and translation, as well as uh, hardware, software, and uh, maintenance of your entire infrastructure of the intelligence community. So, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty much morphing into a, into a commercial operation. This is not good. I mean, you know, commercial companies have a different objective than government uh, or organizations. The government uh, has a more of a, at least a charter to, to uh, do good things for, for the country. Whereas corporations, uh, their, their interest and focus is getting contracts and making money and profits. So the two, and it's very clear, for example, um, in the film that uh, is about me that's coming out in, in February of next year called A Good American, it's very clear in that movie that you'll see how these corporations are manipulating the entire intelligence community and how they're actually doing harm to intelligence production. In fact, uh, what I've been saying publicly for some number of years is, uh, what is what they've done is they've traded the security of the people of the United States and people of the world for money. And they did that by outsourcing the corporations and the corp letting the corporations really govern uh, how they operate and what they do. And this is not good for, for, uh, for any country. Simply put, it sounds like they would only want to make the world worse and have more threats so they could get more funding. And really, it's our government being taken over by multinational corporations. We're being conquered by the multinationals while they claim that the Russians are going to hack our election. So the UN and the EU and the OECD are coming in to, quote, monitor our elections. Uh, what does that sound to you like, Mr. Benny? Well, it sounds like another step towards a world government, you know, a world organization. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just more of the same. It's just extending in, in uh, a different facet. It's expanding in, in different aspects of, uh, of life. You know, the OSCE is the paramilitary intelligence arm of the OECD, and that's the private corporation that took over Europe after World War II and the Marshall Plan. That is the root of the EU and the global government. Uh, again, the former head of the NSA, a technical, the actual leader of it, uh, who helped bring down the Soviet Union, was, you know, uh, privately awarded the highest awards you can get. I know we can't get into those. Uh, is here telling us that America is being taken over by a global government. And Obama, two days ago, I want to play a short clip, sir, uh, was at the UN and he said, look, we got to give up some of our sovereignty to be part of this global thing. Well, it's not like we're giving up sovereignty to be with other countries. We're giving up sovereignty to this mega corporate system that wants a carbon tax, that has given itself diplomatic immunity, tax immunity. This is the new royalty. And here is our president saying we should sign over to this. We should submit to the TPP and the rest of it. It is outrageous. Here it is. But we have to put our money where our mouths are. And we can only realize the promise of this institution's founding to replace the ravages of war with cooperation if powerful nations like my own accept constraints. Sometimes I'm criticized in my own country for professing a belief in international norms and multilateral institutions. But I am convinced that in the long run, giving up some freedom of action not giving up our ability to protect ourselves or pursue our core interests, but binding ourselves to international rules over the long term enhances our security. And I think so they have big global multinational corporations that have secret trade deals that cede our authority, and they admit that. And then he says to be safe and to be happy, we do that. We sign on to it. This is how we're being conquered. The 21st century, it's corporate. It's not military. And then as the film shows, and as they admit, most of the spying on the American people has nothing to do with stopping jihadis. And then Obama's been caught funding the jihadis as a Saudi Arabian proxy army. William Benny, um, you know, hearing that clip, he went on to say we need a liberal world order, a liberal world government. Exactly what you got into. I haven't heard you talk about world government being the objective, but I mean, it clearly is. Can you elaborate 
uh, with your geopolitical and geospatial and technical understanding. Yeah, well, I, I, see, that's the problem. The technology has made this all possible. I mean, I've heard recently some people in uh, Congress saying, you know, following all these people traveling around the world is just too difficult. We need more people. No, you don't. That's a trivial issue. I mean, we could easily follow 12 to 20 billion phone calls a day. If it's, uh, you know, like 10 million people moving around every day is trivial. That's a trivial issue. So all of that could be done by technology, and yet they're claiming something is really difficult, when in fact it's not. Uh, and so uh, they're actually basically hiding the facts of what they're really doing by saying those things. And, and of course, they make it more difficult for anybody to. But it's a it's a way of it's a way of uh, getting more money, more support, than squeezing the populace, for uh, and and uh, and uh, basically swindling them, swindling them out of money and resources. So that's really what the whole objective is. Well, we have shot a lot of special reports with you when you've come and visited us here in Austin. We're going to retweet some of those today and repost some of those on Infowars.com. But undoubtedly. We're now in this paradox where they denied all this existed before, back when it was being done more constitutionally. And now that it's beyond 1984, I mean, just exponentially beyond it, I'd say billions of times beyond it, literally, uh, when it comes to the amount of data being collected, that they just throw it in our face that we should just accept it. Uh, I mean, it is positive that this film is out. It's one of the top films of the country. It's causing a debate, but... Are, are you an optimist or a pessimist? I mean, I, I mean, I think I'm an optimist if we expose to people that we're being conquered by a multinational technocracy in their own words. If we don't define it as the fact we're being taken over and just fight their, you know, fake paradigm of, oh, you know, spy on us to keep us safe or not. I think we can beat this if we shatter the whole paradigm. But I think if we just argue about Big Brother, we're going to lose. What do you think, sir? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the sunshine is what they're really afraid of. Exposing what they're really doing and who's involved is really what they're afraid of. And that's that's why I keep trying to say these things publicly. My point, uh, when I was on uh, uh, <clears throat> USA Today on TV shortly after Snowden material first started coming out, they, they asked me what I sh thought should happen with Edward Snowden. I said I thought he should be indicted, but, but uh, that the law should be applied equally and in chronological sequence of the crimes. So we need to start first with Bush, Cheney, Hayden, and Tennant, all the people in their organization, the White House and the Department of Justice, NSA, CIA, and FBI were participating in this violation of real, really treason against the founding principles of this nation and violations of the law, pen register law, electronic privacy, electronic security, security act, and also all the FCC regulations governing the telecoms. They violated all of that. And that, so after that, that's where we should start with the criminal prosecutions. Then we should move to the Obama administration, do the same people. And then we do Snowden, you know. And since then, not too many people ask me what should happen to Snowden. All right, I want to bring Wayne Madsen in for the, the, uh, the rest of the hour to ask you some questions. He was formerly, obviously, with the NSA. Um, but his main job was, uh, you know, internal security and, and finding leaks, which which I you know tie into your fact of building all these back doors is what created the leaks. So I want him to ask some of his questions, so it's not just an you know average lay researcher asking him. Uh, William Benny, former leader of the National Security Agency, is our guest. But there was an article came out on September seventeenth, and I found it ironic that the Washington Post was with the Guardian, given this info. It's been well known to be CIA since it was you know basically set up in the 1940s since it was taken over by the Grams. Now it's run by Bezos and, you know, the folks at Amazon, the Democratic Party. But to have them make money off the Snowden story, take the data and report on it, then they misrepresent what Snowden did, said he released classified information that hurt people when he didn't, he exposed the crimes. But to take the info, publish it, and still call for no pardon and for him to be basically put in prison or executed, I find to be the height of of hypocrisy and arrogance. Uh, what do you make of the Washington Post saying no pardon for Edward Snowden, which obviously the movie Snowden pushes for? Uh, well, I, I've been trying to point out uh, that uh, a, so it, the government is violation of their own regulations. Uh, for example, Executive Order 3526 is the uh, executive order classification of, uh, of all material in the U.S. government. Section 1.7 of that says that you cannot classify, maintain classified, or not declassify information that's evidence of a crime, corruption, fraud, waste, abuse, or uh, embarrassment of, of a person or an agency. I mean, and it says several other things, but those are the core ones. And that says that they're in violation of their own regulations. 
So, uh, I mean, it's all a, it's all a, it's, it's like they're all saying they're playing the game of the Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Only look at this person over here. They're the bad guy. Very well said, and uh, I think that Snowden, to a great extent, is a toto in this whole thing, but so is yourself and, and, and Wayne Madsen and others. And it's not that I'd even call you heroes, even though in a world of cowards you, you are a superhero. Uh, it's just that we have so many people that are just willing to go along with this and deny it's even happening, and people like you are shattering that paradigm and forcing them to face the man behind the curtain. I want to bring in Wayne Madsen and WayneMadsenReports.com. He'll be talking about this again after you leave in about 15 minutes. Uh, but you're on the air with uh, William uh, Benny. Um, what are your questions or comments uh, for this gentleman, uh, Wayne? Well, first, uh, hi, Bill, and congratulations on the film. I look forward uh, thanks, to seeing Wayne. it. And uh, <clears throat> Alex, I think one of, the, one of the most grotesque things about the Washington Post calling for no pardon for Snowden and effectively calling for his arrest, prosecution, and imprisonment is the fact that it's a, a violation of one of the arch canons of journalism. They called for the arrest and imprisonment of one of their own sources. Exactly. And, and, and that, that, you know, they got a Pulitzer Prize, which they shared with The Guardian because of that story. So on the one hand, they bask in the... Uh, respectability of, of receiving a Pulitzer Prize. At the same time, they're calling for uh, maximum punishment of one of their of one of their. And let's be clear: funds. this is the paper. This is the editorial board. This, this is not some one of their other writers. This, these are the most dishonorable, snot-nosed people I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Mr. Benny, you have a comment on this level of disgraceful activity? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the reason they did all the uh, took advantage of what Snowden had provided originally was because of Bart Gelman. He had the, he had the integrity and uh, and guts to spill into that and make sure it got published. So I mean, otherwise, you know, uh, otherwise many of us look at it as the Washington Compost. Some say it's the worst publication in the country. Uh, Wayne, we're about to go to break, but other other questions. You're talking to William Benny. Uh, what have I not been asking? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, uh, what you hit this um, thing with um, Obama's speech to the U.N., and it's, it's quite clear when you look. And, and Bill, you, I mean, you don't have to go into the details, but when I look at those Snowden uh, uh, slides and I see all the foreign affairs directorate relationships between the NSA and, good God, and maybe 60 or some countries around the world, some of which are not known to be close allies of the United States. Uh, I, I, you just wonder what the end game is here. Is it to um, uh, place the world under some sort of a uh, global surveillance network, uh, regardless of how it helps or hurts U.S. national security? Let's come back and talk about this global surveillance directorate because we've hit on it here. This isn't the NSA. This is a corporate global takeover. People in the NSA like William Benny and others have been fighting it. They are heroes. We'll be back with William Benny to respond to this. On the other side, I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com are our sites. The new app launched two days ago. It's already in the top 30 uh, on the big Apple site and is the fourth most searched app. It's Info All right, we have... William Benny, former leader of the National Security Agency, with us for five minutes the next hour. Then Wayne Madsen rides shotgun for two more segments to get into politics and other developments in the news. But if you just tuned in, William Benny, patriot, uh, one of the top code breakers in U.S. history, uh, created much of the software and the infrastructure uh, that won the Cold War. That's on record. This guy was a you know, hero before he went to Congress and said, you're building back doors into everything. It makes the entire Internet and everything uh, open to hackers, it's spying on everybody's webcams, stop it. And they said, uh, nope, he resigned, then they SWAT team him, they start arresting people. I mean, this is serious business. And they're committing these crimes, they're getting away with it, but, but, but not forever. And you are getting into world government again, whether it was intentional or not, and they now admit it's intentional, They've transferred data, they've transferred a global system of surveillance that corporations, that just a few for, Fortune 100, control. This is a corporate world government, and, and, and uh, you were just speaking to it, Wayne Madsen brought it up. Um, this is basically, in my view, a foreign multinational takeover. This is a 21st century attack. 
you know, we're wondering what wars would look like in the future. This is an information war, and they've taken over. They admit the stock market's rigged. The currency markets are rigged. Uh, they admit uh, the interest rates are rigged. I mean, everything's rigged now by J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, and they're the ones at the heart of these multinational agreements. Uh, can you elaborate on that? And what do we do to unseat them, to, to illustrate this to people, sir? Well, from, from my point of view, I mean, I, if the British company is becoming uh, like the, uh, some of them are becoming things like the sixth largest uh, military industrial intelligence uh, contractors in the U.S., uh, and uh, if you if you look at like Wayne had pointed out all of the first second and third party agreements with between countries uh, that doesn't count fourth parties that aren't even listed so uh, it's like the, those who we don't want to recognize we have a relationship with at all uh, which goes far beyond those already uh, exposed by Snowden uh, so if you look at all of that it's really saying you're uh, you're, you're using all of this intelligence you're gathering to gain influence and access and control and also um, acceptance of, of, uh, by other countries around the world. So they're all trying to join this club of, uh, of having all this knowledge about everybody. Uh, the, main, the main parties are, of course, the Five Eyes, the main English-speaking the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, New Zealand. But also uh, a number of other European countries are participating right now, up to seven or eight of them, I think, in this um, uh, Internet stuff. But also others are trying to get into that. That's another so, question. What do you make? You know, we hear we're, quote, handing over the DNS and control the Internet to, quote, the world. But really, it's to the same group of corporations and the U.N. that we were just talking about. So, the, again, the coup is ongoing. Yeah, I don't uh, see it's all it's all like a... Uh, what you want to, if you could refer to it as a self-licking ice cream cone, you know, it's all <laughs> serving itself. And it's just keeping, it's keep, it keeps growing and growing and growing. The only thing we could do is try to expose it and try to get people to get, to understand that this is not really good for anybody. And we need to all stand up and, re, and resist this. And if people in the, that we elect in Washington or any other governments don't, uh, don't want to stop this, I mean, we should uh, insist and fire them all. And then hire people who will stop it. Absolutely. And, 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 and vote with our dollars. Don't support exactly. self-driving cars. Yeah. The globalists said they're getting rid of us in cars. It's a total technocracy takeover. Wayne, we're going to break. He's with us five more minutes. Ask the question now. We'll come back and hear the answer in the next segment. Uh, another one of your uh, interesting questions for uh, Mr. Benning. Well, I, I would uh, ask uh, Bill uh, on the fourth party agreements. Um, when I see a country like Brazil listed, I wonder... How much of, of that information was used to bring down their own president, Rousseff, in a constitutional coup? That's a great question. Let's talk about destabilization <laughs> efforts using these systems in 70 seconds. We'll be back with William Benny. Stay with us. And the empire we face is a private, corporate, anti-free market empire. It runs the leftist, you name it. It admits, I mean, their white papers are public. They're very arrogant that they're establishing a technocracy. They call their form of government global technocracy in the technotronic era. That's Zbigniew Brzezinski. He wrote that book in 1974. They've done it. They're like 90% of the way there. And they have one of the top brains in the world, William Benning, giving you his analysis of a private, corporate, global, technotronic-based system. He's going to leave us here in about four minutes. I'm very thankful for his time, his courage, what he's gone through. Uh, I... I have to pinch myself that I'm not dreaming here because I'm, I'm so honored to be with this crew and people like Wayne Madsen, people like William Benny, who are filled with integrity. And this is the stuff that made America great, people like William Benny. Um, you heard his question about fourth parties, Brazil, people signing on for destabilization campaigns, internal coups, shining deals with the globalist uh, to then get the data to be able to carry out coups uh, in their country. Can you speak to that, Mr. Benny? Uh, well, I think Wayne's question is <clears throat> is, a, uh, <clears throat> is uh, basically spot on with what they're doing with this information. Uh, they're using it to control people. I mean, people, you know, they keep saying, well, if you haven't done anything wrong, you have nothing to fear. Well, that's totally irrelevant. The only thing that makes any difference is whether or not you're doing something to irritate the central regime. And if you are, they will they will use all this data against you. And I use the, I use the case that they're going against the bankers, putting them, you know, charging them criminally with defrauding people back in 2007, 2008. Uh, you can look at the others like Petraeus, like uh, uh, Jim Risen, Jim Rosen, the AP, other kinds of reporters who have been intimidated and uh, threatened. 
uh, <clears throat> all of that is uh, take, they're taking this material and using that to do that. Or they're using it against the Tea Party or the Occupy group or other kinds of politically active groups that they don't want to be active. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is really the insidious part of it. When they, when they allow the collection and acquisition of data and content information as well as metadata. It's not just metadata. There's sure. content as well. On everybody in the planet to be able to intimidate on and, and, and and shut everybody down absolutely an, an iron fist. What would have Hitler or Stalin have done with this? In closing, and I want to get Wayne a, a final question. Haven't they, in a way, and we're not endorsing the police state or the surveillance grid, dug their own pit because good people in government, and I concur with what you first said months ago. It's true. It's not the Russians. It's people in our own government, corporations, the Democratic Party that are leaking info. It's come out that are exposing this, haven't they with this panopticon spy grid built the, the engine of their own destruction? Won't it be their arrogance that's their final downfall? Uh, yes, it can very easily be simply because all the information is there about them too. So, <clears throat> I mean, I would also make one more point, Alex, if I could. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> all this trouble in the Ukraine, you know, you can use this data also to do, enable things like regime change. Uh, and, for example, when, uh, you know, the Undersecretary of State was saying Yachts is our guy, well, Yachts eventually became the next uh, uh, head of uh, the Ukraine. So it kind of implies that they were, they were involved in some way in, in making that come to pass, which, of course, irritated the Russians. I, you can understand that. Uh, and and uh, even later on, when they violated the agreement they had with the Russians about not inviting anybody like the Ukraine into NATO, uh, then they go ahead and do that, too. So obviously. They're doing some things to, like, irritate the, the, the big bear, you know, Russia. So, I mean, they're not, it's not just a one-sided issue here. We have, we played our part too. And this information, I think, is a part of that and that process of how they're doing it. Well, sir, you did an amazing job on the film as the technical advisor on Snowden. Congratulations. Please come back soon. Uh, I'm going to come back with Wayne Madsen after this, but uh, William Benny, thank you so much for your time at GoodAmerican.org, the film coming out next February. Uh, William Benny, thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you, and thanks for having me. You bet. I'll say bye to you in the break if you can hold one moment. Didn't get Wayne's last question, but I'll have plenty to say when we come back. Uh, wow. Uh, investigative journalist Wayne Madsen straight ahead. That was William Benny saying it's a global government corporate takeover using information warfare.